I'd like to welcome you to Creating Sacred Space in Our Lives. I am Tripp Martin, the pastor of Auburn First Baptist Church, found at the corner of College and Glen in Auburn, Alabama. We are thinking about the birds that we find throughout Scripture. Thankful for the work of Debbie Blue as she points out how these birds help us see new aspects to these stories in Scripture. And if we were to sit back and think about the birds that we remember from the Bible, perhaps the most common, the one that first comes to mind, is the dove. That beautiful symbol of the Holy Spirit, or the bird that stands out from that iconic story about Noah and the ark, But one bird that we might not realize is found in the Bible is the ostrich. But there in the book of Job, a book that we do not read very often, Job laments how he used to be important and prosperous, but then he lost everything. And to describe this experience, he says, I've become like dust and ashes. I'm a brother of jackals and a companion of ostriches. That we find ostriches in the Bible. Now, an ostrich is a strange bird. Six to nine feet tall, weighing 350 pounds, sounds more like an offensive lineman. It's an odd-looking bird with hoof-like feet with a big black claw. They have these skinny legs that don't look very strong, and yet they run like a track star. And they have that long neck like a periscope on a submarine. And they have a small head and big eyes that just seem out of proportion. And here we have this bird which cannot fly. It only runs fast. It seems more like a cartoon character. I've always had a a good vision of an ostrich, probably because it's that impression I got from that classic movie, Swiss Family Robinson, where the family is stranded on an island and they're discovering the environment around them. And one of the sons sees an ostrich and tries to ride it like a horse, like a domesticated animal. But perhaps the most common image that we have about the ostrich is that it is scared and clueless. That classic image of an ostrich putting its head in the sand. But this is actually a myth. They do not hide when they are scared. They do dig shallow holes in order to build a nest and to lay their eggs. But they do not put their heads in the sand. When Job complains that he is a companion to the ostrich, he is in the midst of grieving his former greatness, no longer prominent or respectable. And we certainly feel empathy for Job. He is an innocent sufferer who has lost so much. This moment also became a humbling experience for Job. Not only losing what he used to have, but wrestling with questions he had never faced. Many times we we prop ourselves up in our own eyes, unable to admit what we do not know. And we can justify our actions and our decisions only realizing that that's what we did when we look back from a later time. 
But after Job spends time crying out, even complaining to God, wrestling with these questions he has never faced before, God finally responds to Job in a speech found later in the book, which speaks of humility for all of us. The the essence of this speech is that God is God and we are not. That we were not there when God created the world. That there are some things which are just difficult for us to grasp. Not that we can't ask the question. But perhaps the only refuge we find for those questions is in our faith. In realizing that we don't always know. And in this speech that God provides at the end of the book of Job, where God talks about so many aspects of creation, God does refer to the ostrich. An animal lacking wisdom, and yet God does not consider the ostrich unimportant, that God tends to the needs of the ostrich. And as a companion to the ostrich, Job realizes the same about himself. He may not have answers to all of his questions, but he does discover a sense of peace. Sometimes humanity and all of our capabilities, that we can dream up grand things, but sometimes we don't ever get off the ground because too often our dreams are self-focused. As Debbie Blue writes, we have wings, but we cannot fly. In the 1990s, there was a rising trend for people to invest in ostrich farming. The same decade that gave us MC Hammer and the explosion of fast food invited people not to farm cattle, but to farm ostrich. They use less land and require less effort. The meat is quite lean and low in fat. When they lay eggs, it can feed a family of four, and even their feathers can be sold. But in order to get started in ostrich farming, you had to invest tens of thousands of dollars to buy a pair of ostriches. And like all farming, you don't see a return on your investment for some time. And so many people who dipped their toes into this new industry, they never saw an investment on their return. That ostrich farming never really took off. It reminds us of the countless dreams and desires that people might have, which never fully get off the ground that it invites us into the practice of discernment. Not having all of the answers, but seeking wisdom and weighing our choices carefully and prayerfully. That whereas the ostrich does not stick its head in the sand, perhaps people sometimes do. The people stick their heads in the sand because denial is a powerful tool and a common coping mechanism. We just cannot face what is true, even when it's right in front of us. And we're not sure how to react, so we just look the other way. That we can think of many times where even the church tried to stick its head in the sand whether it was over a scientific discovery or leadership for women in the church, 
or race and the need for integration or questions related to inclusion and diversity. But in those moments where churches were courageous to face what was in front of them, seeking discernment and wisdom carefully, prayerfully, and courageously, things were much better off. Perhaps, as a companion to the ostrich, that like Job, we learn a valuable lesson in humility and discernment. Ostriches are quite rare when we think about the list of large, flightless birds. Debbie Blue reminds us that there used to be a large, flightless owl in Cuba. There was once the bird that we only see in cartoons now, the dodo bird. And New Zealand had 13 or more species of flightless birds. But the ostrich is one that has endured. One of the reasons? They travel in groups of 5 to 50 birds at a time. That there's a communal life for the ostrich. And there are many reasons why this is beneficial. A communal life, for us, fosters humility and discernment. That we cannot ignore as much, even when it's right in front of us, when we gather with others on the shared journey that we do find comfort in community, a good defense against the threats around us, strength for when we are weary, or relief for when we are hurting. But in community, we also are challenged. We enter into dialogue with others. We have thought-provoking experiences. We cannot shut as much out and as a result, there are new insights and perspectives for us to consider. That as a companion to the ostrich, we are invited into this kind of community. That we are called away from focusing too much on ourselves, and we are invited to look at more around us, discovering more of God's grace and presence in this world. It is like the discovery that Job made, that valuable lesson of humility and discernment, that maybe the ostrich is a perfect companion for us. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are thankful for the insights and benefits we find in community with others. May we open our eyes and our hearts to the world around us facing honestly and openly the questions that are before us, leaning into your love and into a love for our neighbor, joining hands with others for the shared journey, for all of the comfort and the challenge that it provides us. Be with us as we practice humility and discernment throughout our lives. Amen. If you would like to know more about Auburn First Baptist Church, 
that can be found at auburnfbc.org.